Hi, I'm Michelle. And I'm Sandy. And we are Wines Wines to Find. Find. We host and produce a podcast. And we do wine tastings and wine education. Find us on Instagram. And if you like this video, click to subscribe, comment, and share with a friend. Thank you for joining us today to learn about rosé. We have a lot of great information to help you pick out a rosé that is just right for you. We're going to be tasting all of these rosés today. Stick around to see what we think about each one. Did you know rosé is a winemaking process, not a varietal? No way. Yeah, seriously. Hmm. So we're going to talk about the rosé the rose winemaking process as part of this. But first, we need you to know that there are several different varietals that can be a rosé of. So that's why you often hear a rosé of Pinot Noir or a rosé of Grenache. And we're going to talk about all the different varietals as well as the winemaking process. But first, we're going to start with the color because that's the first thing you think about when you think about rosé, that pretty pink color. And that's because when you first walk into a store, you see these gorgeous bottles of pretty pink color. But we want to be able to share with you three basic easy elements for you to learn and remember. They are the color, the label, and the vintage that will help you identify a good rosé for you. Well, color is so important because it can indicate the taste profile anywhere from this light pale pink all the way down to your darker shades. Not only will it indicate taste profile, but it can also give you clues as to the winemaker's style, the winemaker's process, even down to the varietal and sometimes even where the grape is grown. You can learn all that from just the color of these Just wines. the color of the, of the wine bottles or wow. the, of the liquid in them. Wow, we'll get to that. <laughs> and if you're interested in hearing from those winemakers directly, check out an episode, 75 is a good one, of Wines to Find. In that episode, we recap conversations with three different winemakers on the process of making rosé. The second thing that we're looking at is the label. The label's gonna have lots of information. Two main things are the growing region and varietal. Exactly. And as some bonus information, something that is interesting for you to know is some countries, well most countries, are very regimented as far as what is needed to be put on a label. And they're usually very consistent. Some of the things that you will find is the alcohol by volume located either on the front or the back label, the growing region, the year it was grown, the producer's address, and grape varietals are some of the things that you would find on your label. So it's exceptionally important. That's right. And sometimes it might be tough to find either the grape varietal or the growing region depending on where it's grown mm-hmm. because of those things. So it's important to know that in the old world, and the old world is generally uh, Italy, Spain, France, it, that growing region itself is what indicates the varietal because in those countries only certain varietals are allowed to be grown in certain areas. Mm -hmm. So if you're looking at it and it says it's grown say in Rhone, then you know that only certain grapes are allowed to be grown in Rhone and therefore you can know what it's a rosé of. And if you don't happen to have that stuff just at the top of the mind, we don't always, (laughs) we made a cheat sheet for you. So yay! Just um, check out that cheat sheet and we've got it all compiled for you. Okay, so now the last element is vintage, which can be found on the label. What rosés are produced to be drank young, but a lot of people think that rosés taste better with a little bit of age, maybe one or two years. But most winemakers, they truly want it to be drank within that first year of production. And and generally no more than three to five. Three to five years. Some may be a little bit more aging in them, but not, but not, not generally. They, they're, it's a young, young, fun, fresh young wine. Fun. That's right. And now that you've thought about and know the basic three elements of what to look for, Mm -hmm. the next thing you need to consider is the who, what, when, and where of your purchase. What are you purchasing the rosé for? Who are you purchasing it for? Is it going along on a beach trip or a lake trip? Is it going as a gift? Mm -hmm. You gotta think about all those things because Mm -hmm. it is definitely going to help you determine what wine is going to be best for that occasion. That's right. On those things to consider, um, if you're gonna be consuming the rosé outside, it might not be something that uh, a cork is very easily brought along and that's oh, corkscrew. okay. Corkscrew, you may corkscrew, not have a corkscrew. Corkscrew, yeah. Corkscrew, and that's okay because a lot of rosés come 
with screw caps or mm -hmm. even um, like this one the glass cork so it just has a pop-up cork which is really fun and even what's the other one canned wines that's and right. that's perfectly acceptable because this is a young fresh young wine and a lot of rosés are produced in cans for that very reason exactly and what about it being food friendly well, that's the other thing is rosés are very, very food friendly. So when you're considering the, the food pairings, mm -hmm. the good thing is the world is almost your, your oyster on that one, ha ha ha, um, because rosés go along with a lot of different things. But that does bring us to something to think about and talk about. Our next topic, in fact, is flavor. flavor, the fun part. That's right. Mm -hmm. What does it taste like? Mm -hmm. When talking about the flavors of rosé, there are two flavors that really are pronounced. Either you've got your fruity or you've got your savory and or your fruity and savory. But fruity or savory are the two things to think about. And the most common, well, current trend, current trend right now is the Provence style. Um, generally, when you go, you're going to find uh, on the shelf wines that are geared towards that Provence style. So that's what we're going to talk about first. That is a dry, mm -hmm. crisp, but also fruity wine, which might have you go and scratch in your head a little bit. Dry and crisp with very little residual sugar, but lots of fruit flavor. Mm -hmm. It's going to be um, not your sweet, so if you're looking for sweet, that's not it, but it is a very classic. In fact, it's considered the Whispering Angel, like um, worldwide, a perfect example of the Provence style. It's the benchmark. The benchmark mm -hmm. of Provence style rosé. So that's why we're gonna be tasting it, and what we suggest is that if you're exploring the rosé world, maybe you start with that one and document. If it's too dry, maybe you want to go for a sweeter one. Um, and then that you can. That's mm -hmm. where you kind of start because fruity can start at this very dry, very dry, very lean, but then it can get sweeter as mm -hmm. you go along. And your varietals will help dictate that sweetness, not mm -hmm. just the winemaking process. Some varietals are a little bit sweeter. For example, a Mouvedre may be a little bit sweeter wine. Mm -hmm. Maybe a Pinot Noir may be a little bit sweeter. Delicate, it'll be more delicate. delicate. Some may mm -hmm. have a little bit more floral notes in it too. Right. So you can look for that. If you want to go even sweeter, go for a Ziffendale, a white Ziffendale. Exactly, the old school stuff because that varietal is definitely sweeter. Plus it will have a little bit of residual sugar left in it. So if you do find that you don't like that dry, lean um, wine, go a little bit sweeter. There's some different stages for you. And next up is savory. Beyond fruity, savory is often used to describe rosés. A savory wine is gonna have, a savory rosé is gonna have a more herbaceous, earthy quality. And you get that, a classic example of that is in the Tavel style. Fun fact, Tavel is the only appellation in France where rosés are grown and known for speci uh, specific to rosé, the appellation to, of Tavel. So in that area, you grow the more tannic grapes and the savory styles get their, that flavor, that savoriness, that earthy, herbaceous from the grapes that have the thicker skins. Those are gonna be your Cabernet Sauvignon, your Tabernia, Tab Tempranillo, your Syrahs. And what you're going to find with those is as they macerate or have that contact with the skin, those tannins, are going to add, um, are going to get into the wine, and those grapes are known to have a deeper color. So that's where you're going to get that deeper toned color, and you're also going to get more body. So it's going to be more herbaceous, more body. It's going to be a more full wine. It's actually very close to a red wine. Very, very similar. Um, it's just a little bit lighter toned. So anyway, that is your savory quality of a rosé. Okay, when Michelle was talking about Tavel wine and the skin maceration, that is one of the processes to make um, rosé wine. There are actually four. The first one was the Tavel, which what you do is you have the skin contact, which is called direct skin contact or limited skin contact. And that's how you produce this beautiful dark red wine. The second process is called Saunier, where it's also known as the bleed off. You have your grapes in tank, and as the juices start to crush down, you bleed off some of that juice, and you use that bleed off, that runoff, which is the Saunier method, to create your rosé. Then the skit, then the juice that's left in the tank is very concentrated, and you use it for a red wine. The third method 
is direct press, where you actually press your wine and it's completely juiced off and it has some of that limited skin contact. That is when you are deliberately making a rosé. The fourth method is blending. That's where you have a red wine that has been fermented and a white wine that is fermented, and then you put the two together. And that generally occurs in champagne where they make a sparkling rosé. So here we are, we've poured all the wines mm -hmm. that we have to taste, and you can see just from looking at the color array. It's like a rainbow. It is, it's a rainbow <laughs> of rosé. There are very stark differences between just even the, the look of mm -hmm. these wines. And we're gonna taste through them and see if that bears out in the flavor as well. Exactly, so we're gonna start off with that benchmark, the Provence style, the Whispering Angel. Right, and if you look at that, it is very pale salmon, and that pale salmon is what you're gonna get anytime you go into the Provence region. In fact, those of you that know the origin of Wines to Find, we actually went to France and then we wanted you'll just have to check our origin story but <laughs> short story we were in france we had a provence style rosé and we actually have a picture of us sitting on lake honesty with a couple of glasses of rosé and we cheers. cheers that's right mm. very lovely that is very nice it is a very dry pleasant crisp lean crisp it's, it's actually not overly acidic either. It's like, no, it's, it's not it's, overly acidic. It's, it's a, like they say, it's a good benchmark for you to try because it does not impart a whole lot of flavor. It doesn't. It just is that good, fun, summer day wine. It is, and the biggest thing that I can say about it is the dryness. You can tell mm -hmm. it is bone dry, which means there is zero, zero, zero residual sugar. So. That's why we say we start with this one. It's classic of the trendy style, mm -hmm. the current style of rosé that, that, that is being um, most found on the shelves right now. And also, it gives you that idea. If you taste this as your benchmark, because it's accessible, it's an easy one to get, and then you go, well, that's too dry. That doesn't mean you don't like rosé. That just means you might you need to try, need to one try one something ones. else. So let's right. go ahead and do that. Do you wanna, uh, I can put it. Do you want me to put, put it, it back, back over there? Let's put sure, it back so yeah. they line up nice. All right, okay. so that goes so here. So our next one is, is and I am, and why am I Mr. Pink? So right there because with a name like pink. that. Because he's pink, one, but also um, that's going to be a fun wine. Yeah, I, I have a feeling with a name like that, with a screw cap, then it's probably going to be They're not taking those. themselves too seriously. They're the ones that are going to be on the boat or on the beach. Mm -hmm. And it's got a light looking color, mm -hmm. so you might Shade think darker that than it is a little one. bit darker, but I'm thinking it's going to be a little fruity. Mm. It is. It is. It's a little bit less dry. So if mm -hmm. you're putting that scale over there, it's got a little bit more sugar. It's probably not as bone dry. And so then it might be one of those that if you if you want a little bit more sweet, but also that fruit characteristic, they're very similar. They yeah. are. They are they are very similar, but I do think it is less dry. It does have that extra sugar in there. Mm -hmm. Um and by no means a lot of sugar. No, just a slight no. hint of, of a little bit more. It would palatable. be good, a, a, another good summertime poolside. Mm -hmm. Maybe a little bit beach. more acid. It it uh, maybe a little bit. Just a hint. Just a hint. All right. Do you want to put me back yeah, there? Yeah, I'll put you back. Okay. And then the next one we have is that Star Mountain. Now this one is a. Um, it's a rosé of pinot. Of pinot. So remember when we were talking about the more delicate, fruity. Mm -hmm. This one is going to be representative of that style. It also has some earth smell in it. it and I think a that has tone. to do with the uh, Pinot Noir grape. Mm -hmm. Now, Pinot is going to be a little bit more herbaceous, but I'm also getting that mm -hmm. red fruit. And if you notice, what we're doing is we're looking at the wine, looking at the color, then we are smelling to see what aromas we get, and mm -hmm. then we actually taste, and then we discuss and talk about what it does. Right. So those are the four step tasting, tasting process steps. that that everybody, that most most people do. I don't know right. if there's another one, but there's that's what people do. Look, see, smell, taste. Well, look and see like are the same, but I. <laughs> <laughs> oh goodness! All right, so this is fruitier. It's fruitier and it's got a nice acidity to it. Mhm. Mm I think there's a good balance there of acid and fruit, um, and that's probably a a more palatable to someone who likes a little bit more sweet. I, I agree. Okay. These two are. Now this one is Chapo, and it is from Spain. You were so excited to try this one. I am. Now I've had this in the um, 
the producer. They're, they're, I've had this producer's red wine, and this is a Montresol. Now, this one, the Montresol grape, is similar to the Mouvedre grape, which we discussed when we were talking about the fruity. Fruity aspect. So we think this is going to be pretty fruity, correct? Oh, yeah. It smells it, fruity. Actually, if you look at the color, the we color, were saying it looks just like cotton candy, doesn't it? Watermelon to me. It oh, looks a lot, lot like sugar. watermelon. <laughs> Oh, but oh my gosh, smell it. Mm-hmm. Wow. It is definitely tutti fruity. That isn't is it? some tutti fruity going on. <laughs> yes. That that makes my taste buds just smile. That's a nice summer day one. And the color, it it, it looks fun. It it is it's like really clean, clean, crisp, more pink. Whereas these mm -hmm. are more salmon. This is more This pink, is almost yeah. even peachy, but this is true pinky. This is very pink. It's it's still not sweet. So if you want that fruit forward, really representative of a fruit, but you don't want the sweet, this is a really great. And it's the glass. This, it has a glass core. A nice take along. And it should be a good price point since it is from um, this Spanish region. Value that has, region. It's, it is. It's a value region in Spain. All right, so let's move Next, on. Next, we have the Carpenter. Now, this is a white Zinfandel. Now, we actually talked mm -hmm. with Laura Carpenter, the wine on episode, on 74. episode 74 of Wines to Find. And Laura Carpenter Hawks, she. Um, You'll have to check out that episode. But one thing that she said is this is not your mama's white Zinfandel. And we have to And agree. we've had it, and it is not your mama's white Zinfandel. But typically, you would, if you do not enjoy those drier, drier wines, you would go to a Zinfandel because usually they have some residual sugar left in it. That she does grape, not. That grape by itself is going to have a sweeter taste. Because Even if you get all the sugar yeah, out of it, it's still, it's still going to have a sweeter grape. taste. So, so let's, let's go ahead. It. Yeah, and look at it. It's, oh. It's it is gorgeous. Pink. Yep. And the smell. <laughs> mm hmm. It is so lovely. There's a lot happening there. There is. It's more than just your fruit, and it has some herbaceousness in it. It too. does. So it's, so it's moving. It's, it's kind of moving along the same way as we're going. This was tutti frutti, mm -hmm. and this has a, a hint of herb to it, a hint of herbaceous. Mm -hmm. So. Very and, nice. and it's very it's very nice and then what we have here there's a definite shade difference you as can we tell move along. Yeah. then, then we go over to Tavel. Tavel is that savory region and honestly Tavel, again when we describe that it, this is the direct skin contact that maceration when we mm -hmm. talked about the winemaking process it's the old school this this is old school red wine this is what they used to make when you yes back in the day and that's a whole <laughs> like, nother like course. back in the 300 years ago day right back that's a whole nother course in the history of winemaking but suffice to say a couple hundred years ago if you were getting red wine it would look more like this mm -hmm. um but let's taste it Okay. Oh, so I want it. Yeah, we're looking at it. It's definitely darker, richer We've, in color. So yes. that lends us to think, okay, it's going to have some more tannins some in more it. Some more tannins. And the smell definitely lends itself to that. That is very lovely. Very savory smelling. Now, and it delivers. But I'm going to pause right there because I, as I said savory, I thought, well, some people following along and listening mm -hmm. might not understand Savory, fruity, you're throwing around a lot of terms I don't understand. Right, and So let's right. talk about, um, we, this is an educational course that we've done. That well, this is, this, this is a class. This is a class. Yeah, this is a this rose, rose, rose class, class. That we're provided. Mm -hmm. We taped it on YouTube. We're providing it to everybody. But we are developing, or we have developed, a, a how to define your own palate mm -hmm. course, which is really what we feel like is the beginning for anyone to learn about their enjoyment of wine. Right, it really helps you define your palate so that you can go into a wine store and identify what wines you wanna bring home and drink. And, but in that, we talk about the different elements of taste. Mm -hmm. And so that's something that if you would like to know about that one, please let us know. You can- Well, just go to this link here. Very good, or DM us. <laughs> All right, and here we go. I, I already it. drank. I, I did too, but I got You gotta go again. Put your glass up there. And again, that Tavel style is gonna be very representative of that savory. So if you wanna get a savory noted wine, look mm -hmm. for that Tavel region. And one thing that you wanna look for is the bottle here. We'll have that tea, crest. The, the yeah, crest. it has the crest. These, and just are, as you're talking about the crest, and the Provence style also has the crest. That's the too. crest for Provence, and this is the crest for Tavel. Only the French wines and only some of the producers will choose to put the crest on the bottle. 
Last, Now. we have our piece de la resistance, a little bit of French for you, the, um, <laughs> the you. sparkling rosé. Now, we put this at the end because mm -hmm. a sparkling wine is going to be different than the steel wines. It adds a different texture element, and that's right. one of the items that we do go into whenever we're talking about in our course, because we were just talking a whole lot about flavors. Flavor, flavor, flavor. Now, this imparts a texture because of the bubbles. Whole new level. Mm -hmm. But... It's fun, and we wanted to make sure we did represent a sparkling rosé. So let's see. And on the smell, very, very Well, the gradient. color is gorgeous. That's right. It's very Pale light. It's, 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 it's not as Actually, light. Actually, it's in between these two, I would say. Yeah. It's in between the Starmont and the Chapo. So it's going to be, it's pink. It's not salmon. It's on the less orange side of pink. Mm -hmm. um, nice bubbles. Very nice bubbles, mm -hmm. but also nice fruit. The bubbles are balanced with the fruit. Sometimes when you get a bubble, especially if you like a fruity wine, If you try a lot of sparkling wines, they don't they don't deliver that fruit punch that you're oh, looking this for. Oh, this has fruit and bubbles. It does. This so is a, fruit and bubbles, but dry. A sparkling rosé might be where to go if you're looking for a fruitier flavor in, in, a, in a sparkling. Yes? Mm, maybe. You have to drink more. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So we have tasted through, and I think what we've demonstrated is definitely there's a color difference. There's absolutely a flavor difference. Each one of these tasted different. And all of those things that we talked about, the varietal, the making all the process, elements, the wine the making color. process, and the color all played a part of the different tastes that we have here. And we hope that you enjoyed this. We hope that you took something from it, and we hope that you would like to continue to learn with us and that you'll join us next, next time, time on Wines, Wines Defined. Defined. Cheers. Thank you.